Look of Genesis chapter 18. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them, and bowed himself to the earth, and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree, while I bring a morsel of bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah, and said, Quick, three seas of fine flour. Knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to a young man, who prepared it quickly. Then he took herds and milk and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of women had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time I will return to you, about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh. For she was afraid. He said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men set out from there, and they looked down towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to set them on their way. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have chosen him, that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice so that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has promised him. Then the Lord said, Because of the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave, I will go down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. Abraham intercedes for Sodom. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. Then Abraham drew near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not spare it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to put the righteous to death with the wicked, so that the righteous fares the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered and said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, I who am but dust and ashes, suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to them, and again he spoke to him, and said, Suppose forty are found there. He answered, For the sake of forty I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak. Suppose thirty are found there. He answered, I will not do it if I find thirty there. He said, Behold, I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there. He answered, For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, O oh, oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak again, but this once. Suppose ten are found there. He answered, For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. And the Lord went his way, and when he had finished speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Oh. Just going to pull out the notes real quick. Alright, so in verse 1, the Lord appears to Abraham. So, yeah, that that's that's basically the whole note, right? Uh, and the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre, as he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day. So the Lord appears, well, yeah, the Lord appears to Abraham, but also he appears specifically at the oaks of Mamre. Angels are with the Lord. Verse 2, He lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth. So, I have an extra note here that's sort of my own interpretation, but I feel like 
there being angels with the Lord instead is more accurate to what is actually being said. But, uh, you know, I just have like a interest in theory that I'm going to throw in after I go through the rest of the notes, right? Uh, verse 4 to 5, Abraham shows hospitality to the Lord. Let a little water be brought to... Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree while I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. So here we see that Abraham being devoted to the Lord, as is shown by like most of the previous chapters that we've gone through, he wants to show hospitality to the Lord because the Lord has blessed him. The Lord has made all these promises to him that he will be that nations will descend from him and that his offspring will be more than the stars that can be counted so you know he wants to show hospitality to the lord and the angels with the lord verse 10 the lord's promise of a son the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. So again, Isaac, like we went through this in the previous chapter, that the Lord has promised that he will give uh, Sarah a son. He will give Abraham and Sarah a son, as opposed to when Abraham and Hagar had Ishmael. This time he will have Isaac with his actual wife. Verse 12 to 14, Sarah's disbelief in the Lord's power. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you about this time next year, and Sarah shall have a son. So, you know, Sarah was old at this point. She was 90, I believe it is, it is said. And, you know, she's, she's grown old. She can't really bear children in the way that we as humans believe. Well, we as humans would, yeah, say that She's old, she can't really have kids, she's, you know, menopause and all that. But the Lord is all-powerful, the Lord is almighty, he can, you know, he can bless Sarah with a child. Like, that isn't something that's really out of his control, he, like, he can do that. Because, you know, he's the creator of the universe, of course he can do that. So... You know, Sarah's shown like a little bit of disbelief as opposed to Abraham's full belief in the Lord. Well, I, yeah, I think in the last chapter too, it was said that Abraham had disbelief about Sarah having a child. So don't, you know, yeah, yeah, right. Like I'm getting messed up with my own thoughts here. But yeah, Sarah has disbelief that she can have a child. So did Abraham. But the Lord is all-powerful. He can deliver on that promise. Like, that isn't out of his control. The things that we think are impossible are not impossible to the Lord. Verse 17. The Lord wishes to hide that he will destroy Sodom from Abraham. The Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? So... You know, like, he, the Lord is on his way to go destroy Sodom because of the grave sins that have been committed there. And also, as a, I just want to very quickly point out, I'm sure you've noticed I've said Sodom in a lot of different ways. It's just because I don't really know how it's properly pronounced, so I'm just sort of going with the flow of it. But, uh, yeah, the Lord is going to destroy Sodom because of the grave sins that have been committed there. And that brings us on to verse 23 to verse 32. Abraham's concern for the righteous in Sodom and the Lord's just and merciful nature. So, here we see the conversation between Abraham and the Lord. 
where Abraham is trying to plead with the Lord to not destroy Sodom if there is anything righteous to be found there. And the Lord promises Abraham that if there is only ten righteous people in Sodom, he will not destroy it. And I think it goes without saying, but even if only one righteous person was found in Sodom, the Lord would not have destroyed it. The Lord is very just and merciful. He, if there is anything good to be found, he will spare destruction on the, on the whole of it. And he is very merciful about it. Like, he doesn't just destroy when there is something good to be found. If there is something good to be found, he will grow that good. He will, he will be just about his judgment. And I, here's the uh, little theory that I had about verse 2. Uh, there are three men in front of Abraham. And he addresses only the Lord. And to me, that feels like he's talking to the Trinity. Now, I could be completely wrong there, but the idea of the three men being each a part of the Trinity, like, it's an interesting thought, but I think it is more accurate that it would be angels with the Lord, but just, you know, I'm just throwing it out there for sake of discussion, right? So yeah, that's everything I have to say today. Keep running when no one else is. Have a blessed day.